watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Definitely like the atmosphere. I feel like we're going to get a lot of fan base and everyone's going to be there. Homestead's a really good team. They're young, but they do have experience. Having that like rivalry kind of, but still, you know, being love between players. We've seen uh, the best of teams and the worst of teams, so I feel like we know how to deal with all of it. This is what, you know, the kids here at Homestead, the kids at Snyder, it's what they prepare for. It's what they play this game year round for. It's a lot on the line. I'm excited, the girls excited, and we should be ready to go on Friday. All right, we know it's basketball season, but uh, not football season. However, it was Mother Nature calling a bit of an audible on us tonight. About, uh, about half the games here in Northeast Indiana, pretty much anything north of Fort Wayne, postponed for precipitation. Good news is that put the spotlight even more so on a showdown at Spartan Arena that certainly deserved it. Josh A. and tipping things off with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. All right, Glenn, coming into Friday, Snyder and Homestead girls deadlocked atop the SAC standings. Snyder 15-2 overall, plus 6-0 in conference play. Meanwhile, Homestead 16-2 and also 6-0 in the SAC. A win tonight, and just one of these teams one step closer to bringing home some hardware. Snyder at Homestead, it's your highlight zone game of the week. The Panthers, they're led by this Purdue uh, commit, Jordan Cool. She is a candidate for Miss Basketball. Meanwhile, this young Homestead squad featuring sophomore stud Maya Epps. And we pick it up in the first quarter with CC Sims, Sierra Sims, going right to the rim. That would put Homestead on the board. But on the other side, it's Gabby Helsum on target as Homestead takes a one-point lead to the second quarter. Now, how about Carly Mullerin keeping it rolling for the Spartans? She finishes with 10 in this one. And Homestead with a two-point lead. Rod Parker and company feeling pretty good. Then third quarter it's Maya Epps proving why she's already got a bunch of division one offers Epps with the Euro step but on the other side it's Poole somehow getting this one to drop however Snyder trailing by six at the end of the third in fact the Panthers trailing by as much as eight in the fourth quarter yet the Panthers come prowling right back thanks to Poole she finishes with a team high 24 and then it's Kyra Parker Big spark in the second half, all 13 of her points coming in the third and fourth quarters, and the Panthers are able to go in front as Snyder puts the foot on the gas pedal right here, thanks to CC Sim. She drops a faker, just doesn't in this one, and it's the Panthers. Big time fourth quarter comeback. They win 60 to 52 over Homestead. We've been training for this. We knew how bad we wanted it. We got a lot of seniors on the team, and um, you know, the underclassmen knew how much we wanted it too. So we just kept fighting and we got the win. This is our biggest obstacle to get to the SSC championship. And this is our seniors last year. And I, I had to help out. We had to work as a team to get that uh, get back. Let's be honest, this is a tough place to win. It's a great team, a well-coached team. And for us to come back from eight down in the four, it speaks volumes of where we are as a team. Next up, Homestead is at Warsaw on Tuesday and at Northside next Friday. Snyder doesn't play actually until next Friday when they host Concordia. Glenn, take it away. All right, so tonight of SAC doubleheaders or what were supposed to be doubleheaders. This one a single game at Charger Fieldhouse. Matter of fact, it was the only other SAC girls game on the night. Lily George with the bucket down there. George, a big night for Carroll. She had 19, but lures in the lead early. Jordan Fuller with a bucket here. She had 14 for the Chargers. Then you're going to see a lure start to get hot. That was Maggie Parent. However, second quarter action, Jersey Paul. She had 11 as Carroll wins a good one at Charger Fieldhouse, 52-48 over the visiting Knights. A little hardwood history at the hangar. This year, the 50th anniversary of the ACAC Girls Tournament. Semifinals between Jay County and AC. That was Bella Denton for two. Jay County up by six in the second quarter. Then it's Molly Mullenkamp with the pilfer the pair and the punishment. Jay County up by 10. Mullenkamp had 18. Adam Central trying to hang around. Kate Fisher on the hook for three. Then it's Athena Schwartz. May the Schwartz be with you. Banking at home. However, Jay County led 28 to 14 at the half. Third quarter, Jay County taking over. Sophie Saxman, two of her game high 19 points. And then you're going to see Hallie Schwederman 
Coming up with the layup off the steel and how sweet it is. Jay County is advancing to the ACAC championship game 56 29 over the Jets. We knew it was going to be different than last time we played them and that they would come out with a lot more aggression wanting um, revenge. So we knew we had to come out with that much aggression as well. Um, it gives us the confidence that I think we'll need to win. They're very aggressive, so being strong with the ball and, of course, always working hard on defense. Uh, you know, we just always got to come out and work hard, and we know that they want to beat us, so we got to focus even more. All right, so who will Jay County face in the finals? The winner of this one, Bluffton versus Woodland. Second quarter action. It's Bluffton on the break. That's Haley Gibson with the lay-in. But Woodland led 18 to 16 at the half. Third quarter action. Reagan Wiedenhofer from Woodland drills the three and Woodland takes the lead 21 to 18. They would not look back. Fourth quarter, Brooke Knibular gets this one to fall. Her sister Taylor Knibular had 14, so did Brooke. And Woodland takes down Bluffton 47-37 to advance to the ACAC championship. Um, so this team is a good team together. We play really good together and this was what we were planning and working for since day one of June is for this moment. You know, we've played both teams already. They know what we're going to do. We know what they're going to do. And it just kind of comes to who wants it more. So I, you know, I, I'll take my girls against anybody in that situation. Love that answer from Dave Randall. We got Jay County and Woodland in the ACAC girls title game, six o'clock Saturday night down in Burn at South Adams. We are going to take a quick time out, but when we come back, it's the fellas' turn here on the Highlight Zone. It is rivalry week in the NE8, and that includes the old leather ball game between Leo and New Haven, plus hunting to North at Columbia City and Norwell at Belmont and Adam Central. Hey, the boys won the ACAC basketball tournament last season for the first time in 047 years. Could they take another step closer to making it back-to-back -back championships? We'll have the answer, plus IU and Mastodons in action Coming up next on the Highlight Zone. We're the Heritage Patriots, and we're back with more Highlight Zone. This week, marking the 101st anniversary of the ACAC Boys Basketball Tournament, longest running conference tournament in the state. Didn't take too long to get the tourney's first upset. See, on Tuesday night, Heritage taking down Woodland on the road in the first round. Now, their reward is Heritage hosting the semifinals as the Patriots taking on a Bluffton team that uh, strolled past Southern Wells on Tuesday. Picking up in the first quarter, Lante Castle for Heritage with the three, and the Patriots out to an early lead on their home court. Bluffton coming the other way. It's Caleb Green with the bucket, and Craig Teagle's team down by just one. Here's Heritage Landon Leibarger. Hit some big shots on Tuesday night. Gets the two right there. You're going to see Green for Bluffton get the bucket here. This one was a back and forth game all night long. Braden Walter would tip one in at the buzzer as Heritage, the fighting Sovines, do it again. Patriots win 37 35 to advance to the title game. Adam Central won the ACAC tournament last year. First time they done that, and as I said, 47 years. The Jets hosting Jay County in the semis this year. A first quarter, Michael McClure, he wants to be an eye doctor. He's got 20-20 vision from behind the stripe. Then it's Ryan Tester. An AC up 11 zip out of the gate. Jerry Baumholt, your thoughts? Yeah, exactly. Jay County coming the other way. Graydon Swovlin knocks down the long two. But Isaac Schultz, man, he is a problem, whether it's the ACAC or whatever conference you're playing against. He gets the putback and one. He had 20 to lead the Jets. AC up 16 to two after one. Second quarter, Trace Mahler nails the three from the corner and Adam Central wins 50 to 35. So it's Adam Central versus Heritage 730 Saturday night in Bern for the ACAC title. First year head coach Josh Wyconan and Snyder are looking for their third win in a row. Homestead standing in the way in the first quarter. Michael Roddenbush reading the defense like a book. He drills the three and Homestead on the board first. However, Quaylen Clopton going to the rack hard just like his uncle Carlos taught him. That's a bucket and Snyder on the board after that. However, Homestead going to Alex Graber, going to play college baseball at Northern Illinois, showing off the weight room work right there. He had 15 points. Homestead up by six. Then it's Wyatt Weaver 
Kidd had himself a night. W squared had 32 points to lead Homestead as the Spartans top Snyder 71 53 behind a big one from Wyatt Weaver. Rivalry, rivalry week in the NE8. That means two time defending conference champ Norwell making the short drive to Belmont. First quarter action. Your name's McBride. You play for Norwell. You can shoot the three ball. That's Adam McBride with three of his 11. Then it's Cohen Bailey. Watch him gather himself here, spin and in. Bailey had a dozen, and Norwell led in the first quarter 18 to 9. Second quarter, Belmont starting to turn the tide. Gavin Kroll with the hoop and the harm. Then you're going to see off the offensive rebound, Job Hoffman. We're going to say this is a dunk. He throws it down as Belmont wins a key NEA game, 51-45 at the TP. One of the Highlight Zone's oldest rivalries, the old leather ball game. New Haven at Leo. First quarter action to Marcus Wright with the bucket for New Haven as the Bulldogs up early. Saul Richard for three. The smooth lefty stroke has Leo up by one. Here's a name we've said many times on the highlight zone. Senior James Hardy the fourth showing off his game from about 15 feet. He drills it. New Haven now up by one. You're going to see Brock shot the football standout. The junior get a basket here. It was Jackson McGee leading the way with 21 points and 13 boards as Leo outlasts New Haven 66 to 57. Along the highway of Vice President Huntington North making its way up to Columbia City and first quarter action. The Vikings feeling good. Zach Nash with the splash. That three goes down and the Vikings feeling pretty good. Columbia City, Brady Hartman. How good has he been this season? Two guys on him, no problem. He knocks down the jumper from about six feet. Huntington North coming back the other way and it's Nash. Watch him scoop and score there for the Vikings. But with just seconds left in the first quarter, Stratton Fuller doing what Stratton Fuller does on the basketball court, and that is beat the buzzer. Columbia City fans know about his buzzer beaters. So unfortunately do Carroll fans. Columbia City goes on to win this one 65-38 over the visiting Vikings. Huge game in the TRC. We got both Manchester and Wabash undefeated in Three Rivers Conference play. The Squires, Ethan Hendricks feeding Gavin Benton, and Gavin Benton would eat. He gets the tough and one for the Squires. Apache's coming the other way. Trevor Daughtry to Isaac Wright for three. And Wright earlier this season went over 1,000 points for his career. And, you know, speaking of 1,000 points, that's kind of our theme in this one. Second quarter, Daughtry with a pull-up jumper, and that is his 1,000th point in his career. For those Apaches, they would honor Trevor Daughtry for that milestone. Unfortunately for Wabash, they fall to Manchester 65 to 58. Big Ten Friday night hoops. Yeah, IU hosting Minnesota at Assembly Hall. What IU team would we get? Well, Mackenzie Mbako says uh, we're going to get a team that can shoot the three ball. That one falls down as IU led by 10 at the half against the Golden Gophers. Second quarter, Mbako. This is why uh, NBA scouts love his frame and his game. Three of his team high, 19. Then it's the sophomore, Malik Renew. With the top two here, he had 16 points. Khalil Ware, 17 and 14, as IU wins at home, 74-62 over Minnesota. Keep your eyes on this one. Macedon's on the road, a Friday night Horizon League showdown at Robert Morris. First half, Northrop Grad. Jalen Jackson, a former Highlight Zone star with 17 points and nine boards, but the Don's down two at the half. Late second half, Josh Corbin. He nails the three here. That would send it to overtime, tied at 78. In OT, we're tied in the final seconds. Marquise Hastings for Robert Morris with the game winner at the buzzer, and the Mastodons lose their third in a row. This one, unfortunately, in dramatic fashion as they fall 91-88 on the road in OT to Robert Morris. Stay tuned. Your Gem of the Night is coming up next. We're the Leo Lions. Stay tuned for more Highlight Zone. We are the Carroll Chargers. It's snowing outside, but we're partying inside. Welcome back to the Highlight Zone. 
Hey, last Friday was the first Friday night of the new year. You know that you have a calendar and we tipped off 2024 with a bang. Preston Comer, man, a huge jam to jolt a second half surge as Wayne beating Northside with Comer earning the Highlight Zone's highest honor. Well, what can follow that up? Here's your gem of the night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers and Jordan Poole, man, too cool for school. You know, when you're talking college football, you talk about a player having a Heisman moment. Well, maybe this is her Miss Basketball moment. Snyder down eight at one point in the fourth quarter. Poole bringing the Panthers all the way back to beat Homestead. She had 24 points, including that beauty right there. And Jordan Poole, the Purdue recruit, with your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem of the night. As for next week, we've got five SAC doubleheaders, weather permitting, of course. That includes the Battle of the Bishops in boys' action only. Bluffton uh, against Adam Central in girls. DeKalb is at Columbia City Wall. It's an NECC doubleheader, Westview at Fairfield. These games and many more next week on the Highlight Zone. From the hardwood to the mat, girls wrestling state finals in Kokomo. We pick it up in the finals. 110 pounds, New Haven's Juliana Ocampo. Already a two-time state champion, better make it a trifecta. Ocampo dominating in the first place match to bring home a state title for the Bulldogs. And then it's Juliana's younger sister, Isabel Ocampo, the state champion here in the 115-pound weight class. She won her match 3-0. And then Jay County's Mallory winner, well, a big-time winner. She is the state champion in the 155-pound weight class, beating Eastside's Reagan Trenery in the final match. In addition to Trenery, East Noble's Kylie Honaker, Huntington North's Abby Troutman, our Aubrey Troutman, and Homestead's Katie Vardaman earned state runner-up in their weight class. Finally, Comets Hockey K's their second of three straight on the road at Rapid City. First period, no score. It's the newly acquired Dejon Mingo. Oh yeah, Jesse Kalicki, glad they brought this guy in. His first goal as a Comet, and the Comets go on to win this one by a final of 3-1. These two play again tomorrow, 9.05 our time in scenic South Dakota. That'll do it for this week's edition of the Highlight Zone. For Josh, I'm Glenn. We'll see you next Friday, hopefully without the snow and all this stuff.